This may look like a cold, empty brick building. However, this building has a story to be told. I have to be thankful just to save my life. I just uh, was heading in the wrong direction. Ran into some very good people there, teachers, friends, uh, the community. It was a real good place to grow up, Chester was. The building itself is unique in, in its structure. Very well built. We tried to build that Costello area. It took them days to get through the concrete wall to put the doorway in. Because it's so thick. It's so thick. The building was built in about the 1935-36 range. It was a work progress building and they're trying to get projects that would be meaningful. And that building certainly has been meaningful for a long time. This building is empty and is unused. School district being a landlord for anything is never a good situation for school district. This is the former Chester High School known by the locals as the Maple Avenue Building. Built in 1935, the building was part of the New Deal program enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt to pull the United States out of the Great Depression. This building has been a fixture in its community for many years. In 2004, a new building known as Chester Academy was constructed to fit the demands of increasing enrollment. Soon after the district moved into their brand new facility, BOCE signed a lease agreement with the district to repurpose the building for various programs they had. This lease lasted 15 years until they broke out of their contract unexpectedly in 2019. With the district scrambling to find a purpose for the property, they proposed a $7.9 million athletic facility that would lead to the inevitable demolition of the historic building. This plan was in favor by the locals because of the building's historical significance. Meanwhile, the building is rapidly decaying, bringing the total cost of repairs to well over $4 million. Uh, repairs, as I said, are estimated to be at least $4 million. We don't need additional space. It's vacating it, closing down systems, and probably putting a fence around it to, uh, to keep people away from it. Today, the building sits empty and unused, a mere shell of the purpose it once served the community. very emotional for me because so much changed. This is your first classroom, Mr. Obama? This is my first classroom. I, a part of me really wish I didn't go to that walkthrough because seeing those changes bro broke my heart. There was an emptiness and the coldness of the building was really, because that building was never cold. Like the cafeteria looked cool. Like, it was still small and quaint, and there was artwork in the cafeteria, but the, the walls being so bare. Like, the library being gone broke my heart. I modeled my classroom after that library with all the student memories. I have such great memories about Mr. Klinger. If you notice around my classroom, I have all this memorabilia from students over the years of me teaching here. And the reason why I did this is, number one, I am very proud of all my students. But number two was, Mr. Klinger did that also. Yes, I remember Mr. Klinger. He was the librarian. He always had some uh, quirky statements to say. I, have, like, I, can, I can hear him saying it, and I just can't think of what it is. Have a happy. That was his phrase every time you left the library. Have a happy, that's it. Mr. Klinger, uh, he always used to say, have a happy. Just write, have a happy on everything. Just every time you were in his presence, you left his presence. He was a very smart man. He was always such an upbeat guy. 
Okay, he had the coolest library ever, but it was just a, like a cool place just to hang out and have study hall there or whatever. Hi, it's John Klingner. When I closed each class, I would say, have a happy. And then the kids would always come back, have a happy what? And I said, what would make you happy? The thing that made Chester, which I felt was exceptional, was the, the close relationship that you could have with the students. I came from NFA, which had four or 5,000 students, and you lose something because everybody in Chester knew everybody that was in the school for one reason or the other. I think we just had an excellent group of teachers. Marlena Lang was there a long time, too. She came after um, I was in high school. People really liked her, and she was very, she was very smart. Um, she was really lovely. Hello. I've had some tremendous, tremendous students, whether they're, you know, academically tremendous or just person-wise. John, John Klingner is, a, is a, the character of Chester, fantastic man, a fantastic man, hardworking, had that library running ship shape. It was, it was quite amazing. I really liked that building, um, not so much the newer part of the school, but the part that faces Maple Ave. I, I thought that was a, a good-looking building. The building looks monolithic when you first look at it. I mean, you w drive down the street and there's this huge yellow rectangle, right? Unless you really stop and look at it, you don't really see how beautiful it is. You know, it represents an era in, in our history. You know, many, many of these buildings were built during the New Deal. Chester happens to have one that's, you know, it's not that big, but it's very well done. It was done by an architect of uh, wide repute and very well respected. Um, he designed over 40 schools in the state of New York. You know, it has a lot of cast stone detailing. It has the monumental sized windows. It has the chamfered corners on the building. It has the offset clock tower. Um, it has some Gothic elements. It has the uh, coins on either side of the both entrances that are really asymmetrical, but they're very balanced. If you really spend the time on looking at them, they're beautiful. Actually, it's quite amazing that the, the Maple Avenue School is as beautiful as it is because there were so many regulations that that he had to, to comply with. Sunlight had to come into each classroom during the day. So it had to be oriented in a way that allowed that. I didn't go to this school, uh, you know, I came to Chester later in life and you know it's it's not the school I went to and I don't Cliff didn't go to it either but um, you know we're just interested in it you know it's part of our history. From 1935 until uh, it was replaced in 2004 by the Chester Academy it seems to have been a, a focal point for the for the Chester community you know a lot of the alumni uh, you know, seem to have very fond and strong memories of, of their time there. Oh, I loved it there. I didn't know anything about Chester. I didn't even know where Chester was. I had to find it. Like, my husband had to drive me to Chester. English, of course, that's my cert. But in Maple Avenue, there was no real middle school. So you could teach seventh grade, in the morning and have 12th grade all afternoon. You were everything. That was the other thing, Caleb. You did not feel like you were going to work. It was just fun. It was just fun. It wasn't like, oh God, I have to go to work. Do you know Mr. Mr. Stock? Oh my God, yes. I just remember that all of the teachers who worked for him um, really liked him. And by the time I got here, I guess he had retired for a couple of years. One of the original schools had a big bell in the tower, and all of a sudden it disappeared. And for years and years and years, nobody could find that bell. And then uh, when another school was built, one of the custodians um, was in the basement of the school and they found the old bell. Where that bell is today, I don't know. It, uh, does it really? That's where it is now. Okay, yeah. 
Another thing that always stands out in my mind when people talk about that school is the senior steps. That's what it was called in the 1960s when we graduated from, from that school. And at that time, only the seniors were allowed to, to walk on those steps, to enter or to leave the building. Yeah, it was a special privilege that we had back in those days. Oh, God, my favorite class had to be science and Mr. Bandura. Yep. Oh, God, he was he was always, like, down on our level, like, taught us stuff, but he was always there for us if we needed him. It hasn't changed one bit. It has not changed one bit in the 22 years since I, w I had him in chem. He's still so funny. The experiments were so awesome. <laughs> well, he's probably the last teacher that's still there that I hired many years ago. I have been at Chester for 30 years. I was 24 years old and I saw an advertisement in the New York Times in the education section that said they were looking for a chemistry and physics teacher in Chester. And I didn't really know what Chester was. Yeah, I interviewed for it. Mr. Stoddard interviewed me. I met my wife in Chester. I met my wife when she, she worked, she began working, I think, in 94. Yeah, Mr. Stoddard was a great guy. He, um, he was the uh, superintendent, and Mr. Ray was the principal at the time. Uh, but yeah, Mr. Stoddard hired me. That Mr. Stoddard. See, he was the, I believe he was the superintendent when I was there. Um, but he was known by everyone. He, you know, everyone loved him. He was great with the students. You know, he really, he really cared about, you know, the education, the students' well-being and everything. When I started, he was, he was the principal. At some point, he became the principal and the superintendent together. I'm not going to say he wasn't strict, but he had the uh, he had the students' interest at heart at all times. And I remember he had this plaque on his desk, and it's like I think one of his catchphrases now: um, "Whatever you do, do well." I was teaching one day and the principal at the time, Mr. Ray, he came in my room and the door was unlocked and he walked in and he said, Mrs. Cardinal, you have to keep the door locked because I was on the, I was on the first floor. And I said, I do, why do I have to keep the door locked? And he said, well, you really should because we have a Camp LaGuardia and sometimes the men come in the building. And I didn't know what Camp LaGuardia was. And I said, oh, okay. I'm thinking it's like a camp. Like, okay, the men, well, maybe that must be the counselors. Like, I didn't know who these people were. And I went home and I had mentioned it to my husband. And he said, no, 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 no. It's not a day camp. It's not counselors. He said, those are people that are like recovering from maybe alcoholism. And, you know, they have problems. They, they live in Camp LaGuardia. <laughs> I was like... Well, I wish somebody had told me that before I was hired. I would have kept the door locked. Uh, but I never saw anybody walk in that wasn't supposed to be there, I guess. I feel a little sad to see it toward now because part of that was a WPA project too. It makes me very sad as a historian that they're looking to pull down a building that was part of the Great Depression. And I'm very concerned about what's going to happen now. But there are also many, many instances of buildings just like this one that have been rehabilitated in towns all across the state and the country. Every one of those projects faced similar obstacles and were able to overcome them to create beautiful spaces for the public and the entire community. One example is a public library in Charlevoix, Michigan, a town with less than 2,500 people where they rehabbed a 1927 building, almost exactly like ours, into a beautiful public center. Both the town's and the village's comprehensive plans underscore the value of our community's history. And yet here we are, sitting idly by while one of our most iconic assets is in danger of being thrown in the trash, instead of being converted into a new, even more valuable asset. These are the types of projects, ambitious and achievable, that can instill civic pride 
and improve the lives of generations of future Chester residents, and I hope we don't let it slip away. The school is in the business of educating our children, and they do an amazing job at it. But this type of project calls for municipal involvement. I love the building that we're in right now, the Academy, because it's beautiful, it's so open and airy, and you know we've got great technology, but the old building had heart. Because you were sharing classrooms, because there was only one tiny little faculty room, everybody was together all the time. Here you know how this building seems kind of like small. That building felt even smaller and more homey. We have a beautiful facility here and we can do so much to make this building more like a home because we are a family here at Chester. All the students here, they treat each other like a big family. The teachers are caring, the staff are caring. You know, no one falls through the cracks at Chester. I have to be thankful Chester saved my life. We moved to Chester when I was 11 years old. And I was a handful, I have to tell you. I was a handful, and I, you know, it's sometimes when you grow up and you realize what you had, you know, and I look back on it, I had a lot and didn't even realize it at the time. And let's hope we don't let this slip away.